Hello everybody, I'm Harold with Nature's Friends and we're going to do a different type of video today for sure. We're going to show you how we pier fish at Outer Bank, North Carolina. All right, this is a typical bottom rig. You get it and you have the hooks come on it and you put a hook on this end. You ain't, you're not showing the hook, you look at it. And then there's another, this is called a circle hook. These hooks, the fish don't swallow them and they get hung in their cheeks real good and they're easy to take out circle hook okay so you got the rig hooked up now we're going to tie it on and this is the part that people have difficulties with but it's real simple get you enough line out there where you can work with you spin it around at least about seven or eight times and I'm blind so you gotta be easy with me here and you feed it through that hole Right there. You gotta hit the hole, Harold. Okay, right there. And you bring it back through just like that. And you pull it. And you slide it down. And you got a good knot. Now you take your clippers. And you clip that piece right there off. Now you got, you're ready to go, you're ready to go bottom rig fishing. When you bottom rig fish, <clears throat> you're going to use different sizes of weights. Today the ocean is marsh, you can scan out there, it's pretty flat, nothing, no rapids, no, not rapids, no waves. So we're just using about an ounce weight. All right, we're going to put shrimp on it. Okay. Take your shrimp and you peel it. Always peel it. Okay, you don't want a big piece. Just cut that little fella in half. And this looks like a mess, but honestly, it stays apart really good. Now, I'm showing you fishing, not catching, okay? We've been coming down here for <clears throat> years. Like I said, we used to live here. This pier is where we always like to fish. You just hook it on there just like that. The fresher the bait, the better the fish like it. So now you see, this is ready to go out. Okay. We just take and pitch it underhanded. And this is the bottom fish. Okay, get your line tight so you just sit and watch it if it starts wiggling. This is squid. We cut the way we cut our squid, you just cut the squid in half, scrape the skin off. Cut it in little strips like that. And that's what you'd put on your hook. Okay. Now if you're gonna do different types of fishing, and whether you're gonna be fishing for trout, bait, live bait will catch about anything. But you, of course you have all different kinds of bait. This is called a gotcha. You take, we'll tie one of them on later and show you tie that on and you cast it and when you reel it in you jerk it and you take and uh, then the, the, the bluefish Spanish mackerel they like to hit this how about trout trout sometimes but not very often okay trout what you want to do is tie one of these rigs on. Oh, okay you tie this on it's called a jig head then you take a grub like this and you slide on it I don't have any made up right now these jigs come in different sizes. You got a small one. Normally you tie this on the end. Then a, we get first one you tie on is, is the red. And you put your grubs on. Now this is called a bucktail. And the way you do these, these come like this. And they come in white or green like you see here. So what you got is you tie the loop right here. 
and there's the first one. The following is a small one. You just pull that through the water. That's called a bucktail. They work really good sometimes. When you're fishing, you just gotta have a lot of different bait and catch whatever's biting. So I mean, it's not, everything don't bite the same thing every day. So you can use blood worms. If we don't use them, they're very expensive. They have artificial blood worm. They have artificial squid. We got so many different things anymore, but we're gonna show you this and hopefully we're gonna be catching some fish and pull them in and show you how we do that too. Thank you. Okay, this is when we show you this. A lot of people come down and they think they're gonna have to have a big surf rod, a big ocean rod, things of that sort. You don't need all that. This, this is a nice reel, it's a Pen 5500. That's a good, excellent reel. You can go to Kmart. I went to Kmart one year down here and bought me a one for $29.99. Within 20 minutes, I had to pour that thing plumb out and took it back. Of course, you made a fish, you just stripped it. So you really do want to get a good reel. Like I said, a little short rod. I can't stand them on long things and poke you in the belly. This is all you need for fishing like this and a lot of surf fishing. So how many feet is this little rod? It's like a five footer. Six foot, seven foot ugly stick is the best. That's what we used to have. And some kid broke the tips off of them. But he, uh, you know, these work great. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And a good reel is always better to have. So we'll be back later on and show you some more. Hi, I'm Marcia, and today I'm using a bottom rig. Got shrimp, got my weight. What weight did you put on today? Yeah, it's about a one one ounce one ounce because the ocean's not very rough today so what you want to do if you're using an open face reel have your finger right here open your bail this way you're controlling your line make sure nobody's behind you you don't want to catch any people and straight ahead and then line so you've got it make sure you get your line tight so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna set mine here. Okay, now, now let's walk in and we got some people gonna show us how to use a trout jig. Okay. And that'll be a good, okay? Okay, okay this is Earl. And uh, Earl is fishing for trout. Yes. This, this is a trout rig. On this end I have the uh, swimming mullet. Uh, this over here is the paddle tail. Uh, when you're fishing for trout, you fish a little slower than you would for bluefish. You pull it out. What pound test line do you use? Somewhere between 8 and 10. See, most people think you come to the ocean, you have to be using. 12 pound, 20 pound. 20 years ago, I thought the same thing. I know, we did too. All of a sudden, when we started doing the jigging for the bluefish or for the trout, we found out that the lighter line we do just as well. And like I said, with the trout, you go a little slower, a little smaller jig. You don't hit so hard. They kind of slow down and they'll then run up and grab. We'd slow today. I'd like to have a trout on here now to show you. But I'd love for you to have a trout on there. And he's fishing with his lovely wife. So it's nothing like a fishing a man, husband and wife fishing team. We just both love it and we've been doing it for over 20 years together. We used to come one week at a time and then two weeks at a time. And all of a sudden we decided we want to be here more, so we got a house down here. Good. <laughs> That's great. Well, Earl, we'll be back in a little while. Hopefully we get to show you pulling one in. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we just got to see Earl with the trout rig. Now this is called a gotcha. This is fishing for bluefish, or we're fishing for Spanish mackerel, and sometimes the trout even hit it, or a puppy drum, or anything else. So here we are. Let me show you how to do this. That's when you really have to be careful with because those hooks are unforgiving. They will get you. Cast it out. Then when you start reeling this one in, 
little different. You have to do this with the jerky. Real and jerky. And that simulates a wounded minnow. If there's any Spanish mackerel or bluefish in there, they just love it. They just, and they'll hit it quick. So I'd love for one to get on there to show you. Maybe later on today they'll come in. Whenever you're fishing, it's called fishing and not catching. It's always a pleasure to do. You meet some of the nicest people that you ever met in your life. You'll remember them for life. You'll you just you just become friends with everybody because you always have something in common. And the Nags Head Pier here in North Carolina, we've always enjoyed it. We've met some great people. Andy has a great restaurant, very good hospitality. People that work behind the desks are all wonderful. Hopefully we're going to show you catching one here in a minute. The speckled sea trout. They are beautiful fish, aren't they? Yes, they are. And he, he bit the lead hook. Now, is that a keeper? No, it's got to be 14 inches. This one you measure out. He's about 12 inches, it looks about like. 12 inches. I measure at the end of my... <laughs> I measure at the end of my rod. And remember whenever you... You'd be getting somewhere in there 12 and a half, 13 inches. And whenever you put a fish in your cooler, you always want it to be a quarter inch longer than legal, don't you? Oh yeah. They shrink up a quarter of an inch once they hit that ice. Or either you gotta put some, put a tongue or something on it. <laughs> Thank you, Earl, for showing us to, that. Let's try to get him back in the water where he can grow. Well, that's fantastic. At least we got to see a fish caught. Yeah. All morning, sir. I'm glad we got one. That's why it's called fishing, not catching, right? That's right. Okay, this is Tim. He's the one that checks you in at the pier. You can buy all your fishing gear. You can get, you can rent your rod and reels here. This is where you buy your pass to fish. You can get a day pass, three day pass, or a season ticket, whatever suit. So here we go. Okay, everybody. We didn't get a lot of fish caught, but we had a lot of fun. We showed you how to do it. We're at the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Next hit here. Pay us through these doors. And that's a tree. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Carl with Nature's Friends. If you have any questions, you can email us at naturesfriends at Thank you.